Hi there, welcome to another episode of the Weekly Roundup, your go-to for the latest and greatest in data science. This week we're covering how machine learning might help save the Great Barrier Reef, and how Microsoft built a code-generating AI that plays Minecraft. So stay tuned to stay in the loop, and don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss another update. Our first story this week takes a look at how DoorDash is standardizing experimentation across their various data and analytics teams. The company has built Dash AB, a centralized library for statistical analysis that's aimed at streamlining the flow of data-driven experiments within the firm. For companies that rely on data, it's important to test every change through experiments to make sure that the change will have a measurable, positive impact. DoorDash runs thousands of experiments every month, which can be difficult to manage effectively without firm-wide standardization. Dash AB aims to firstly reduce the number of errors in data analysis, for example, by ensuring that teams take into account clusters in diff diff analysis and switchback analysis. Secondly, it also seeks to reduce the amount of duplication of effort within the company by making it easier for teams to share solutions to common problems. Thirdly, Dash AB hopes to improve the speed of learning for all data scientists at DoorDash by making it easier for them to access and share knowledge about advanced methods and techniques. Because of the very different types of applications and experiments being run at DoorDash, Dash AB needed to be trustworthy, accessible, scalable, and comprehensive in order for it to successfully tackle the key statistical problems in the company's processes. Dash AB is a great example for other companies that are working towards scaling their operations while remaining data-driven. Implementing an experimentation engine like Dash AB can go a long way towards speeding up experiment velocity and ensuring that experiments are reliable and efficient. Moving on to our next story, Dyson is supercharging its robotics ambitions, recruiting 250 robotics engineers across disciplines including computer vision, machine learning, sensors, and mechatronics, and expects to hire 700 more in the robotics field over the next five years. The company's at-home robots are part of a $3.44 billion investment plan, with Jake Dyson saying this is a big bet on future robotic technology that will drive research across the whole of Dyson, in areas including mechanical engineering, vision systems, machine learning, and energy storage. We need the very best people in the world to come and join us now. Jake Dyson, who's Dyson's chief engineer, will lead the development of new technologies at a new centre in Wiltshire, England. The company will also open a new lab in London, as well as hire more recruits at the UK-founded firm Singapore headquarters. The firm is halfway through the largest engineering recruitment drive in its history, with 2,000 people having joined the tech company this year, of which 50% are engineers, scientists and coders. The master plan is to create the UK's largest, most advanced robotic centre at Hullavington Airfield, and to bring the new technology into our homes by the end of the decade. In spite of the dip in hiring we've seen across the tech industry, it appears that job prospects are still looking bright for candidates with machine learning and data science skills. Our next story takes a look at how Google have teamed up with CSIRO to develop a machine learning platform with the goal of helping to save the Great Barrier Reef. The platform is designed to help scientists identify and track a particularly harmful species of starfish by analyzing video footage in near real time. While reefs face a number of key threats, including climate change, pollution, and overfishing, the crown of thorns starfish has been adding insult to injury by eating away at the remaining Great Barrier Reef coral. Outbreaks of cots, as they're more informally known as, are natural in the Indo-Pacific, but falling numbers of natural predators and excess runoff nutrients have led to a dramatic proliferation of the starfish. In an effort to control the crown of thorns starfish population, Google and CSIRO have built a machine learning platform on top of the NVIDIA Jetson AGX Xavier that can analyze underwater image sequences and map out detections in near real time. In order to meet the performance requirements of processing more than 10 frames per second on a less than 30 watt device, the team open sourced insights by hosting a competition that enabled them to learn from the successes and mistakes of the 61,000 competition submissions. Not only did the platform score well in testing, achieving a sequence-based F2 score of 0.8, but the team plans to open source the model and invite feedback from the open source community. This is helpful not only to improve the model itself, but also to allow conservation organizations and other governments around the world to retrain and modify the model with their own datasets. A link to the Colab notebook can be found in the description below for those of you who want to take a closer look. Our final story takes a look forward to the future of software and auto-generated code. 
At the recent Microsoft Build Developer Conference, the company's chief technology officer, Kevin Scott, demonstrated an AI helper for Minecraft that converts written instructions into in-game executable code. The Minecraft helper was trained on vast coding datasets, natural language, the Minecraft API, and a few in-game use examples. This enables the AI to take written requests, such as come over here or make and equip a torch, and write the code to execute those commands. This is the same technology that the AI coding tool GitHub Copilot is built on, an AI that automatically suggests code when a developer starts typing or in response to a comment or question. Both of these applications suggest that the future of software is a lot of AI generation, allowing us to think about software development in a different way by expressing intention as an additional interface input. While there's been some concern over the possibility of AI taking jobs away from developers, Kevin Scott says, we're gonna see lots and lots of big productivity wins for all sorts of routine cognitive work that none of us especially enjoy. Alex Barashkov, the CEO of Pixelpoint, describes Copilot as super useful in situations when he has to work with less familiar programming languages, as it removes the need to keep searching for snippets of code on Q&A sites like Stack Overflow. More importantly, the advent of these code generation tools lowers the barrier to entry for software development, which means that in the future, people will be able to create meaningful and useful applications using only natural language. We're super excited about the possibility of AI enabling easier coding and easier Minecraft games. Let us know what you think in the comments. That's the end of another roundup. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.